This is an ACU Centre for Liturgy podcast. Speaking of liturgy. The Mass of the Holy Oils, or the Chrism Mass, is a significant diocesan liturgy celebrated in Holy Week. Speaking of liturgy, Dr Paul Taylor, Assistant Director of the ACU Centre for Liturgy, delves into the ancient rituals of anointing and the significance of the sacred chrism, the oil of baptism and the oil of the sick. The Mass of the Holy Oils, or Chrism Mass, celebrated early during Holy Week, has a very long and complex history. It's also a Mass that contains a number of very important theological and liturgical themes. The oils blessed and consecrated during the liturgy are associated with ancient rituals of anointing used across various religious traditions, including Judaism and Christianity, as symbols of identification, strengthening, healing and sanctification. For the historical origins to this rite, we need to cast our minds back to the Old Testament, such as the first book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 1, chapter 16, verse 13, and the book of Leviticus, chapter 8, verses 12 and 30, where we discover that kings, priests and prophets were normally anointed with the oil of consecration as a sign of their office or duty. They came to prefigure Christ, whose name is derived from the Greek word Christos, meaning anointed of the Lord. Later New Testament sources refer to the anointing of the sick with oil, such as the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 13, and the book of James, chapter 5, verse 14, accompanying prayers to God for healing and forgiveness. Later early church sources, such as Hippolytus from around the early 3rd century, describe catechumens being anointed with oil accompanying prayers for strength during their conversion to Christ and the Gospel prior to their baptism. One can see in this early church practice a prefigurement of the oil-based liniment used by contemporary sportsmen and women to strengthen and protect their bodies and their skin from lesions and to help them elude the grasp of opposing forces during their sporting conquests. I'm sure the spiritual significance of these anointings is not lost by the catechumens and their sponsors within the RCIA process. In early Christian communities, after baptism, the anointing of neophytes with aromatic chrism came to be associated with the reception of the gifts of the Spirit, perhaps owing to the chrism's wonderful odour of sanctity. Around the 4th century, it seems that chrism, comprising oil and an aromatic resin called balsam, was initially consecrated by the bishop during the Easter Vigil for use during the baptismal liturgy. After priests were deputed to celebrate the rites of Christian initiation in local communities on Holy Saturday, however, it was necessary to consecrate chrism at the next earliest time, namely the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday, as there was no celebration of the Eucharist on Good Friday. The practice of consecrating chrism after communion on Holy Thursday continued in the Roman Rite until the reforms of Holy Week in the mid-1950s. Some early church sources also point to separate prayers of blessing for the oil of catechumens and of the sick. By the 7th century, in northern European churches, these prayers were added to the consecration of chrism and eventually included in a separate Mass on Holy Thursday morning, a practice which is continued today by the Pope at the Basilica of St John Lateran, his cathedral church in Rome, and in other dioceses. In other places, the Mass of the Holy Oils is generally celebrated earlier in Holy Week, for example on Tuesday, for the benefit of clergy who need to travel considerable distances in many dioceses, and due to their preparations for the Triduum later in the week. After the liturgical reforms of the Second Vatican Council, between 1962 and 1965, 
Pope St. Paul VI approved changes to the Chrism Mass. Because of the strong association of the Holy Oils with the sacramental ministry of priests and the celebration of the Chrism Mass on Holy Thursday, when the Church teaches that Christ instituted the Eucharist and core components of the Church's priestly ministry, Paul VI approved the addition of a ritual after the homily for the annual renewal of priestly commitment. Reflecting upon the rich significance of this liturgy, the Chrism Mass brings together several rich and important themes. For example, the rubrics highlight the ecclesial communion that exists between the bishop as high priest of the local church community and the diocesan clergy. The scripture readings, comprising the first reading from Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 3, 6, 8 to 9, the second reading from Revelation, chapter 1, verses 5 to 8, and the gospel from Luke, chapter 4, verses 16 to 21, remind those present of the purposes of Jesus' anointing by the Spirit in fulfilment of the prophet Isaiah, namely, to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, to give new sight to the blind and freedom to the downtrodden, and to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. Finally, the liturgical prayers of the Mass, especially the preface before the Eucharistic prayer, connect Christ's anointing by the Spirit with the royal priesthood of God's holy people, a number of whom are ordained to share Christ's sacred ministry. The blessing of the oils of the sick and the consecration of chrism for rites of anointing during the sacraments of baptism, confirmation and ordination, and the consecration of altars and dedication of churches is significant when celebrated close to the Easter Triduum. These sacramental actions are intimately connected with the ministry of the ordained bishops, priests and deacons in service of the religious and lay faithful, and the anointing with chrism links the ministry of the priest to that of the bishop. At the same time, one can't lose sight of the very human, even humorous stories regarding the sacramental use of oils. For example, one bishop has remarked that he needed a course of physio on his thumb due to the number of confirmation ceremonies in his diocese. Then there is the story of the priest who says he came closest to feeling like the bridesmaids in the gospel when he turned up for a hospital anointing only to find his vial of oil for the sick was empty because the top came loose in travel. The rituals of anointing mark important liturgical symbols in the church with signs of Christ's saving presence and foster rich reflection on our participation in Christ's paschal mystery celebrated with heightened solemnity during the paschal feasts. Mindful of the rich commentaries that have appeared since the Second Vatican Council regarding the significance of our baptism into Christ's body, the responsibilities of the ordained in relation to the baptised within Christ's royal priesthood and all God's people, and the important participation of all priests, ministers and the faithful during the celebration of the Eucharist, increasing opportunities have been provided during the Chrism Mass for clergy, religious and laity to renew their respective commitments to the service of Christ and the Church. When we think of the various pastoral considerations that come into play in relation to the Mass of the Holy Oils, we need to include the question of convenient timing in relation to the Easter ceremonies, finding ways to provide for a range of diocesan representatives to attend, the logistics regarding provision of a generous amount of oils for each parish, provided either centrally by the cathedral community or by representatives from parishes, and also identifying a suitable place of honour called an ombre in parishes for enshrining the vessels containing the holy oils. The Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference guidelines on liturgical space, entitled And When Churches Are to Be Built, Preparation, Planning and Construction of Places of Worship, 
published by Liturgy Brisbane in 2014, advise that the most common location for the ombre containing the holy oils is near the font. For two of the oils, the oil of catechumens and the holy chrism, are used during the sacraments of Christian initiation. The Mass of the Holy Oils provides the bishop, priests, deacons, religious and laity, including where possible staff and students from Catholic schools, staff and residents from nursing homes, and also where possible those preparing for Christian initiation or full communion, those that can attend with a wonderful opportunity to be touched again by the presence of Christ, to renew their commitment to participation in Christ's paschal mystery and priesthood, and to furnish parish communities with the holy oils. The Chrism Mass can underscore the traditional biblical rites of anointing and service of God with the ministry of the bishop as Christ's chief shepherd in the diocese, in collaboration with the local priests and deacons, and by virtue of their common anointing through baptism and confirmation, the ministries of religious and laity. As the prayer after communion from the Chrism Mass puts it so eloquently, the anointing with Chrism calls all who minister to exude the pleasing fragrance of Christ. That was Dr. Paul Taylor exploring the meaning and the associated history of the oils that are blessed and consecrated in the Chrism Mass during Holy Week. The ACU Centre for Liturgy, which provides pastoral formation in liturgy across Australia and beyond, is pleased to provide this podcast, Speaking of Liturgy. 